Hello everyone, my name is Uzair Hashmi and for my profile details, please visit scordia.com. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about the rhythmical excitation of heart. So let's begin. In, th in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss step-by-step -step processes which basically uh, are involved in causing the rhythmical excitation of the heart for uh, the heart to pump blood through the, to the lungs and to the peripheral bodies. Now, in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about the specialized system for the excitatory and conductive system of heart. We are going to start off with the sinoatrial node. We are going to discuss about its location, position, structure, uh, and the process of the transmission and the mechanism which is involved in the generation of impulses. After that, we are going to discuss about the automatic electrical rhythmicity of the sinus fibers uh, leading to that would be the self-excitation of the sinus nodal fiber and we are going to discuss how different ion channels are involved in the process of this self-excitation. We are going to discuss after that the internodal pathways and the transmission of the cardiac impulses through the atria. We are going to discuss how the internodal pathways transmits the impulses from the sinoatrial node into the atrioventricular fibers, AV bundle and leading to the Purkinje fibers. After that, we are going to discuss in detail about the rapid transmission of the impulses in the ventricular system, including the Purkinje fibers. We are going to discuss how these impulses are then spread throughout the ventricle, uh, including the heart as well. We are going to discuss after that the sinus nose as the pacemaker of heart and we are going to discuss the reasons that are involved in the uh, establishment of the sinoatrial node only as a pacemaker, not the AV bundle, not the AV node or the Purkinje fibers. After that, we are going to discuss the control of heart rate by the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. So let's begin off with the specialized excitatory and the conductive system of the heart. As you know that the heart plays very important functions to provide oxygen to carry out sing every single metabolic process that occurs in the mitochondria because that needs oxygen, oxygen is provided by heart. So in order to provide oxygen to every single cell, hence tissue, hence organ, heart needs to proper function. And in order to proper function, uh, the heart, the specialized excitatory and the conductive system of a heart has been uh, taken place, a very important function. Now, here, the generation of the rhythmical impulses uh, causes the contraction of the heart. This point plays a very important and the very baseline of this particular lecture. Now, these electrical uh, impulses that are being generated carries the uh, impulses throughout the heart very rapidly uh, in the bolt of lightning. Now, under the normal physiological conditions, what happens is that the atrial contraction occurs. There is a delay of the uh, contraction of the ventricle with the atria with a time span of one sixth of a second. Now, what it means is that the, when atria will contract, the blood will be, you know, uh, the, after the contraction of the atria, the blood will be shifted from the atria into the ventricle. Now there would be one sixth of the second gap between the atria and the ventricle contraction. And this gap plays a very, very important function uh, uh, in the, uh, in, uh, towards the continuous heartbeat. And this says, uh, this is because of the reason that the ventricle, because uh, if there is no time span, uh, there is no gap of the atria and the ventricle contraction, there would be no time for the heart to fill, for the ventricles to fill with the blood. Now, this particular one sixth of the second plays a very important function. It allows the blood to completely fill the ventricles and after one sixth of the time has been passed, Ventricles will then contract, hence sending blood to the lungs for the oxygenation and the oxygenated blood when came from the left atrium into the ventricle towards the whole of the peripheral organs of the body. Now, additionally, there is a simultaneous contraction of all the ventricle portions. Now, this plays a very important functions because ventricles are comparatively bigger in size as compared to the atria. So ventricles need each and every single portion of the ventricle from the anterior to the posterior portion of the ventricles needs to be contracted simultaneously. Now, this plays a very important functions because of the very effective pressure generation within uh, the heart. So that the... Uh, blood which is being pumped uh, should be pumped with effective force so that it can go to every to the distant organs of the body. 
Now here you can see the musculature of the cardiac muscles. Here you can see the atrial musculature and the ventricular musculature. Uh, the cardiac myocytes, they are present in the double spiral form. Here you can see and they are separated by the atrial septa. Now here in the ventricular uh, vasculature, you can see that the ventricles, they, uh, the ventricular myocytes, they move from up to down and then move in a spiral manner and they move upwards. Now this spiral structure plays a very critical role in the, uh, towards the effective pumping of the blood throughout the body. Anyways, one of the important functions that I would, uh, one of the important differences that I would uh, like to explain over here between the skeletal muscle fibers and the cardiac myocytes is that the amount of calcium that is being needed because they have to pump blood effectively. So they need much more calcium ions to effect, to pump the blood, which moves through the sarcoplasmic reticulum, hence bind to the uh, heads of the actin molecules. So uh, they, they need much more calcium instead of the uh, skeletal muscle fibers. Anyways, moving on, uh, we're going to discuss the conductive system of the heart, which basically is involved in the generation of the cardiac impulses. So let's begin with the SA node. We are going to discuss the sinoatrial node or the SA node, which plays very important functions in the generation of the impulses. So the excitatory system or the impulses that uh, leads from SA node from the atria to the ventricle, all of this process starts off from the SA node or the sinoatrial node. This then carries impulses uh, towards the AB bundle and the uh, nodes that basically are involved during the process of transmission of the impulses from the SA to AV node is the internodal pathways. Now there are three internodal pathways that has been discussed in the later slides. This includes the interior, middle and the posterior internodal pathways and this was followed by the AV node. Now the AV node uh, plays a very important function in delaying of the impulses that comes from the SA node towards the AV bundle. Now, if you can recall, I uh, discussed in the previous slide that there is a gap of one sixth of the second from the ventricles to contract. Now, this gap is being provided by the uh, AV node because uh, it keeps the uh, electrical impulses for a particular time. There is a particular delay so that the ventricles uh, do get the time for the blood to be filled in them. After the AV node, uh, the transmissions are being conducted to the AV bundle and from AV bundle to the left and right bundle branches of the Purkinje fibers. Uh, this whole phenomena can be uh, summarized in this particular slide. Here you can see the SA node that is present towards the uh, posterior lateral wall of the uh, right atria just below and towards the lateral side of the superior vena cava. These then shoots down into three sub branches of the internodal pathways that uh, includes from the anterior over here to middle and the posterior internodal pathways. This then follows by the AV node, which of course causes the delay for the atria after the atrial contraction for the ventricles to contract. There is a delay after the, from the AV node, the transmission of impulses moves towards the AV bundle. And from AV bundle, they move da deep down towards the left branches, left bundle branch and the right bundle branch of the Purkinje fibers. Now, let's start off with the sinoatrial node. Let's start off with the structure uh, of the sinoatrial node. Uh, if you can recall in the previous slide over here uh, or over here, you can see that the sinoatrial node plays uh, is placed towards the posterior, superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium. Here you can see the right atrium and here is the sinoatrial node. Now it is present just below the superior vena cava and towards the lateral side of the vena cava. Now talking about the structure of the sinoatrial node, it's basically a flattened and ellipsoid muscle fiber. Now, it is important to consider the SA node that is uh, present uh, just above the right atrium in the form of the muscle fiber that is about three to five uh, micrometers in diameter. Uh, and it does not have, uh, almost, it doesn't contain any uh, contracting myof microfilaments. Now, talking about the location, as I've told you earlier, it, it's present just uh, superior to the posterior lateral wall of the right atrium and just beneath towards the lateral side of the superior vena cava. 
Now, talking about differentiation, uh, this particular sinoid trial, because it's a cardiac mu muscle fiber, but the difference occurs in the range that it does not contain any contracting uh, uh, myofilaments as compared to the atrial muscle fibers. Now, but this one of the reason for that is because of the size. It is about three uh, to five micrometer in diameter as compared to ten to fifteen micrometer in diameter. Uh, talking about the structure, it is about three millimeters wide, fifteen millimeters in length, and only one millimeter of thickness. So uh, let's explain this particular slide. The sinoatrial node is present over here. This is followed at the junction of the atrial and the ventricle is the AV node. And this is formed by the bundle of His, also known as the His bundle. Uh, the, this is the Bachmann's bundle, uh, which is basically responsible for the uh, transmission of the impulses towards the left atria, so that both of these atria contract simultaneously. This bundle, bundle of His then moves deep down into the posterior and anterior segments of the ventricle in the form of the Purkinje fibers, which basically uh, activates the ventricles to contract simultaneously to generate effective pressure so that the blood knee can be pumped uh, to the lungs and to, to the peripheral uh, organs of the body. Now, let's talk about the automatic electrical rhythmicity of the sinus fibers. Well, let's start off with the self-excitation. Now, I want you to pause the video and think what self-excitation means. Now, self-excitation means that particular, for example, in this particular case of the sinus fibers or the sinus nodes, they don't need any exterior signal and exterior stimulation to, you know, get excited, to get excited. Uh, they have their inbuilt self-excitation process. Uh, which causes the discharge of the heart, hence this particular self-excitation of the sinus fibers or the SA node controls the heartbeat. Now there is a huge mechanism involved in uh, the self-excitation process and we are going to discuss in detail in the coming slides. Uh, but at this particular point, it's important to, to discuss and review, which I have discussed in the previous lectures about the three type of channels. These include the fast voltage gated sodium channels, slow calcium, uh, sodium and calcium channels, and the potassium channels. These, all of these channels combined, plays a very critical function in the excitation of both the sino, uh, both the atria and the ventricles. It can be explained over here, uh, the sinus nodal fiber uh, action potential is being represented in the red line and the ventricular muscle fiber action potential is being shown in the green line over here, as you can see. So let's start off with the uh, ventricular muscle fiber. As you can see over here, it has the resting membrane potential of about 90, uh, minus 90 millivolts over here, as you can see. It causes the rapid upstroke, rapid upward spike, as you can see over here. And this spike is because of the opening of the voltage-gated sodium channels. Now, if you can recall, when the sodium channels had opened in the previous lecture, it caused the movement of thousands and millions of the sodium ions that are present in the extracellular fluid or the ECF into the cell or the intracellular fluid. And that is through the process of the uh, uh, when sodium channels are being opened. Then you can see the plateau phase over here. Now this plateau phase is because that the sodium channels after they are being opened, they're being closed and after that sodium calcium channels are opened. Now if you can recall sodium and the calcium channels, the sodium calcium channels they are uh, a bit delayed in terms of their response. For example, when they will open slowly and they will keep open for a particular time because they open slowly and of course they will close in the similar fashion at that they will close slowly. Un un unlikely uh, well, with, as we compare as we compare it to the uh, as we compare it to the water gated sodium channels. Right? So I after the particular plateau phase has been over, that, that means that the sodium and the potassium, uh, sorry, sodium and calcium channels there, sodium calcium channels there being closed, this, this immediately follows the opening of the potassium channels. Now, the potassium channels plays a very important function over here because the depolarization has been uh, released 
uh, so the body needs to terminate the action potential of the ventricle so what I mean by saying this is that when you uh, go for the repolarization or the termination of the action potential you always need potassium uh, ions to open so that the positive ions which uh, the, uh, the influx of the positive ion uh, is equated in equilibrium and negated uh, in response to the outflux of the potassium channels so when the potassium uh, channel opens the potassium will leave the cell from the intracellular space move into the extracellular space and this will of course call, bring down the action potential uh, down towards the minus 90 as you can see over this particular line the downward spike immediately is because of the opening of the voltage gated uh, potassium channels which basically causes the termination of action potential over here right so in comparison to the ventricular muscle fiber let's discuss the sinus nodal fiber now the sinus nodal fiber has a very uh, limiting resting potential for example uh, in comparison to the uh, ventricular muscle fiber they had minus 90 millivolts of the resting membrane potential and they are uh, around minus 55 millivolts of the resting membrane potential so what what is the difference between the sinus nodal fiber and the ventricular muscle fiber if you can recall what I have discussed in the previous slide I want you to pause the video over here and just think about the differences in the sinus nodal fiber and the ventricular nodal fiber and the differences lies in the uh, opening and the closing of the three channels mentioned below uh, mentioned in the previous slide so uh, I think uh, it's time we discuss the sinus nodal fiber action potential so the prime difference of the opening and the closing of the channels between the sinus nodal fiber and the ventricle nodal fiber lies in the difference of the uh, working of the sodium uh, voltage gated sodium channels now in this particular case in case of the sinus nodal fiber either they are blocked i'm talking about the sodium channels either they are blocked or they are being inactivated so the only channel that works is the sodium channel calcium channels now if you can recall sodium calcium channels they uh, are slow to open and slow to close so what basically happens is at this particular point you can see there the action potential has been terminated what happens is over here you can see uh, there is a slow opening because uh, over here you can see that the extracellular sodium is being present of course uh, but the sodium channels are being blocked so those channels which are being opened which remain open there are very few of the channels which remain open of course but those channels causes the leakage of the sodium because of the uh, diffusion because there is a huge amount of sodium ions that are present in the ex extracellular fluid as compared to the intracellular fluid so there's a uh, electrochemical gradient that has been established so those channels uh, which are being opened which kept open they causes the leakage of the sodium ions into the intracellular fluid so when the sodium ion moves inwards it basically increases the resting potential slowly and steadily slowly and steadily until it reaches the threshold of minus 40 millivolts over here as you can see when it reaches the threshold of minus 40 millivolts what happens is basically it causes the it sends the stimulus uh, to open the sodium voltage gated sodium calcium channels now these sodium calcium channels when open they causes uh, this particular shoot of the spike over here and uh, this they remain open for about 10 to 15 uh, 100 millisecond to 150 milliseconds and after that they these channels they close and when they close the sodium channels uh, sorry the potassium channels they open immediately after that they causes the depolarization repolarization over here as you can see reaching the threshold of minus 40 uh, and when the potassium channels are open slowly and steadily the sodium channels are being closed but over here if you can see the spike at the threshold the resting membrane potential this is the threshold of minus 40 millivolt but what happens is that this particular line is going just beyond the th minus 40 millivolts to the minus 55 millivolts uh, let's uh, discuss the difference of what is basically happening over this particular point over here from minus 40 to minus 55 millivolts so what basically ha is happening is that uh, the potassium channels which were being opened they don't close at this particular point 
and they cause effect much more of the potassium channels than the uh, than needed to achieve the minus 40 millivolts to move outside the cell through the process of the uh, diffusion where, where the potassium ions are present in the abundant quantities in the intracellular fluid as compared to extracellular fluid. So basically what is happening over here is that uh, from minus 40 to minus 55 potassium channels they don't close it takes a few a few tenth of the seconds for the potassium channel to close and in during that particular phase it causes the hyperpolarization of the action potential for the sinus fiber now this particular point from minus 40 to minus 55 represents the hyperpolarization and at this particular point what ha is happening is basically that uh, the hyperpolarization stops because the uh, uh, potassium channels which were being open are being now closed per uh, holy now what is basically happening is that now the potassium channels are closed the sodium calcium channels are closed so it causes because uh, the sodium calcium channel causes the outward movement of the sodium so what happens over here is that uh, they, uh, again the sodium is present in the abundant quantities in the extracellular fluid so it will what, what it will cause is basically it will cause the movement of the sodium again slowly and steadily from minus 55 to minus uh, from to minus 40 millivolts so that the resting membrane potential increases increases and reaches up to a particular point known as the threshold and again it reaches to minus 40 millivolts now this minus 40 millivolts again then causes the opening of the uh, sodium calcium channels which of course last for 100 uh, to 150 milliseconds and after that they close and which again then causes uh, the depolarization depolariz and the hyperpolarization by the potassium channels and this particular cycle goes on and on and on causing the sinus nodal fiber uh, to uh, you know discharge uh, after their threshold as compared to the ventricular muscle fibers now let's move let's summarize this what we have discussed that this occurs in four steps number one is the self excitation that causes the action potential of course now this self excitation to cause the action potential is because of the uh, sodium channels that are sodium channels or the extracellular sodium which are basically present outside and they leak into the side where of course they will cause slowly and steadily causes the uh, self excitation because the sodium channels are moving slowly over here as you can see in my up till minus 40 they reaches to the threshold where uh, it gives signals for the excitation to begin so when they are open uh, the sodium uh, calcium channels open uh, so what we can say by the recovery of the action potential is that where this is where the sodium channels uh, sodium calcium channels will close and the potassium channels will increase now what will happen over here is that uh, it, uh, potassium channels will of course causes the recovery of the action potential but what happens is that potassium channels don't close when the action potential has been completely recovered. What actually happens during that is that uh, the hyperpolarization which means that the potassium channels remain open for a particular time for about 10th 12th of the second. Uh, now this particular time during this particular time uh, when the potassium channels are being opened the threshold decreases from minus 40 to minus 55 and that particular point as discussed in the previous slide over here is known as the hyperpolarization. Now when the hyperpolarization is over it means that the potassium channels are being closed then when the potassium channels are being closed there is an equilibrium between the influx of the negative ion and the outflux of the positive ion so what happens is that the the drifting starts the, now what I mean by saying well, drifting is that because the sodium channels again are present uh, sodium ions are present in abundantly in the extracellular fluid they are moving inward so basically this causes the drifting uh, the slowly and steadily upward movement of the action potential from minus 55 millivolts towards the minus 40 millivolts where it will achieve uh, the threshold it will reaches the threshold and hence it will cause the activation of all of these processes. This is followed uh, by the of course re-excitation and eliciting of another cycle and this particular process goes on and on uh, 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 this is how the sinus nodes are being excited and we will discuss in the later slides that how the sinus, sinus nodes they uh, are discharged before the Purkunje fibers or the AV bundle fibers they are being excited. So 
the sinus nodal fiber are being over uh, we have discussed in detail uh, of this particular figure uh, we'll I'll just summarize over uh, that the ventricular muscle fiber action potential is minus 90 millivolts as compared to minus 55 millivolts it causes the drifting of this particular resting membrane potential that is because of the leakage of the sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid and that is because and that is because the sodium channels they are permanently blocked as compared to the ventricular muscle fibers which causes the upward spike immediately and this hyperpolarization is because of excessive amount of the potassium that is being transported out uh, and when the hyperpolarization is over it again causes differing uh, uh, by the move inward movement of the sodium so uh, we are done with the sino atrial nodal fibers and sa node and we are going to discuss uh, the connecting uh, thing which basically connects sa node with the av node and that is internodal pathways uh, we'll discuss how the internodal pathways causes the transmission of the cardiac impulses through the atria. Now, it is important to consider over here that because the SA nodal fibers, they are directly connected to the walls of the atria. So uh, whenever the impulse is being generated, it will simultaneously excite the atria without any difference because they are being connected with the muscle fiber walls. Now the speed of conduction in the atria uh, varies, mostly it's about 0.3 meters per second, but it can go to about, uh, about one and in abnormal situations, uh, situations it can go to even 1.5 to 4 meters per second as well. Now let's talk about the pathways of conduction. There are three major pathways which I'll just name for now and because these are not the part of our discussion, uh, these three pathways of the internodal are based on their location. As you can see over here, the three internodal pathways uh, over here, you can see is the ex anterior internodal pathway, the middle one and the posterior internodal pathways. Now there is a delay of 0 0.03 seconds where from the a AP uh, from the SA node when it reaches to the AV node. Now over here, you can see uh, that there is a further delay of 0 0.09 seconds uh, in the AV node. Now this particular, uh, uh, delay is very really critical towards the you know regular heartbeat regular function of the excitation of the uh, conductive system of heart and that is because uh, if you can recall I, there there has to be a gap of one sixth of the second so that ventricle gets the time to fill with blood so that once after one sixth of the second has been passed what happens will be uh, it will uh, then cause the release or the contraction of the ventricle muscles would happen and it will of course sense the blood after that. So there is a this delay of 0 0.09 second is very critical. So this causes the total delay of 0.12 seconds over here and then there is a further delay of 0 0.4, 0 0.04 seconds when it moves from the AV node into the AV bundle and then from there to the left bundle branch and the right bundle bra branch of the Purkinje fibers and hence reaching to the ventricular septum. So now uh, coming to the next slide, we are going to discuss what uh, I have summarized in the previous slide and that is the atrioventricular node and the delay of uh, conduction of the impulses from the atria to the ventricle. Now. Uh, there is a, there is a reason when the cardiac impulses uh, does not travel from atria to the ventricles too rapidly and I have explained in the previous slide that what is the reason behind that and the reason behind that is this particular delay allows the time for the atria to completely empty themselves in the ventricle and the ventricles to uh, you know receive the blood that the atria has sent after the contraction. So when the atria has stopped you know uh, pumping blood into the ventricles and the ventricles have been filled completely that particular one sixth of the time will be over and then ventricles will contract. Now AV node uh, and it's adjacent, uh, let's read through this particular point first and then we'll, I will discuss it with you step by step. Now what basically happens is that the AV node and it's adjacent uh, conductive fiber delay this particular transmission. So uh, what I, I explained in the previous slide is that the AV node uh, functions to delay this particular uh, conduction. Now this particular delay is because of uh, the its location and that is because in the previous slide as you can see is the presence of the atrioventricular fibrous tissues that provides a resistance towards the you know spread. So uh, they are AV node and the uh, adjacent conductive fibers they are present towards uh, the posterior wall of the right atrium immediately behind the tricuspid wall. 
Now this impulse impulse reaches over here to the AV node in about 0 0.03 second as I, I explained in this particular lecture it, in 0 0.03 second. Now there is another delay of 0 0.09 second when it stays, when it reaches to the uh, internodal fiber, it stays in the AV node for about 0 0.09 seconds before it, it, but before these impulses, you know, they can move down to the AV bundle and from AV bundle to the Purkinje fibers, uh, causing the con uh, regular contraction of the ventricles. Now, uh, when it passes from uh, AV bundle to the a AV node to the AV bundle, there is a final delay of 0 0.04 seconds that mainly occurs because of the penetration of the impulses in the AV bundle. So the total delay in the AV nodal fiber, AV nodal and the AV bundle system is about 0.13 seconds and that is only for the case of AV node and the AV bundle fiber. If you increase, if you, you know, add up uh, the delay of 0 0.03 seconds from the SA to the internodal pathways to the AV node of that is that basically is about 0 0.03 seconds. So the total delay from the sinus nodal fiber to the uh, ventricular bundles uh, makes a total of 0.16 seconds. Right, so let's move on onwards. Uh, the atrioventricular nodal and the delay of impulses that I have explained in the previous slides. The internodal pathways over here, as you can see, are the uh, three pathways: the anterior, middle, and the posterior one. And these are the transitional fibers that basically, uh, amp, you know, elicit the impulses from the internodal pathways towards the AV node. Now, the AV node, uh, along with the atrioventricular fibrous tissue, they causes uh, the delay in the transmission of the impulses and that delay is about 0 0.09 seconds. Now let's discuss about the penetrating portion of the uh, AV bundle. Uh, there is a further delay of, of 0 0.04 seconds in that so it makes a total of 0.16 seconds until it moves from the posterior to the distal portion and from distal portion to the Purkinje fi fibers so that they are being conducted very fastly with a speed of up to 4 meters per second into the ventricular fibers from uh, the endo to the epicardium so, so that the contraction starts to begin. So in this particular lecture, we have discussed up till now uh, the specialized uh, the specialized conductive system of the heart, and we discussed uh, the ins and outs of the sinoatrial node. We discussed from its structure to its location to its function and its mechanism, along with the internodal pathways and the AV bundle fibers. Now let's start our discussion uh, with the rapid transmission in the ventricular of the Purkinje fiber systems. So uh, Purkinje fibers, they lead from the AV node uh, through the AV bundle into the ventricles. Now these are the initial portions of the uh, fibers uh, where the resistance will occur. Now this resistance of course plays a very critical function. Now uh, they transmit the uh, potential uh, th with the velocity of about 1.5 to 4 meters per second that I discussed in the previous slide. Yeah, I mentioned in the previous slide it it is basically around six times uh, much more speed uh, than the speed between the ventricular muscles and it's about 150 15 times much more speed than the AV nodal fibers because AV nodal fibers causes a delay so there is a very slow speed at that particular time. Now this high speed is because of the permeability of the gap junctions between the intercalated discs and these discs are present between the successive uh, cells that makes the Purkinje fiber. So now over here you can see, uh, just imagine this is a Purkinje fiber with three to four successive cells over here and each cell has a gap junction with the intercalated disc. Now this gap junction instead of providing resistance has a very high permeability towards the movement of the ions. So when Whenever the action potential reaches towards this particular end, ions are immediately released without a single delay. So the resistance is not offered in the gap junctions. So this causes the velocity to increase when the action potential moves down for, uh, through the Purkinje fibers. So as I've discussed, the ions are transmitted easily from one cell to the next, thus the velocity of the conduction or the transmission of velocity increases. Now it causes the uh, one-way conduction through the AV bundle fiber. This plays a very important function. Uh, uh, the AV bundle fibers or the Purkinje fibers have developed a specialized system. This pro basically uh, prevents the uh, transmission of the impulses back towards the atria. So we don't want when the atria are being contracted and the ventricles are about to contract and they're not being contracted, it causes the reverse uh, transmission back to the atria. 
So what would happen in that particular uh, scenario? You can imagine that the atria are contracting and the contracting twice then uh, they should uh, contract and the ventricles are not being contracted because the uh, transmission that is being uh, that is supposed to you know move deep down to the ventricular tissue they move back upwards so this particular thing doesn't happen and that is because of the one way conduction uh, nature of the av bundle and the purkinje fibers so uh, AV bundle then of course distributes themselves into the uh, ventricles through the left and the right bundle branches uh, which I have discussed in the previous slide over here you can see as well the SA node with the internodal pathways move into the AV uh, node and the AV bundle where uh, there is a particular delay of about 0 0.909 seconds uh, and then uh, the transmission moves from the bundle of his into the Purkinje fibers where the uh, where they transmit the impulses for, in, towards the left and the right bundle branches. So, um, transmission of the cardiac impulses in the ventricular muscles. Uh, so, we have started off with the uh, SA node, where the SA node uh, initiate uh, the process of the excitation. It uh, causes the contraction of the atria, moves down to the AV bundle through the internodal pathways, and the internodal pathways have up till now moved the transmission to the Purkinje fibers. Now, the, Purkin the transmission is in the... Uh, ventricle muscles so it's time for the ventricle muscles to contract now let's discuss what happens during the contraction of the ventricle muscles when the Purkinje fibers have the transmission impulses so after reaching the impulse is transmitted uh, through the through the whole ventricular mass and that is by uh, the fibers by themselves at a speed of 0.3 to 0.5 meters per second now the cardiac muscles wraps around itself in a double spiral form uh, that I have discussed in the very initial slides I, uh, and over here you can see as well that it wraps around themselves with a double spiral form with a fibrous septa between the spiraling layer. So there is a here, septa you can see over here between the spiraling layers. Therefore the transmission uh, that reaches uh, from the endocardial surface to the epicardial surface uh, reaches uh, with a further delay of about 0 0.03 seconds which is very small if we can compare so the total transmission of the cardiac impulse uh, from the initial bundle of the branches because there is a delay of 0.3 second, 0 0.03 seconds before and there is a delay of 0 0.03 seconds when the impulses move from the endocardial surface to the epicardial surface where the uh, and the myocardial surfaces where the uh, where the muscles are present so uh, this causes the contraction so there is a whole delay of 0 0.06 seconds so uh, over here you can see uh, the summarized version of the cardiac muscles through the heart now before i discussed uh, uh, it is important to consider at this particular point that you students needs to you know learn the all of these points uh, and you need to exactly remember just these uh, points where what is the delay at this particular time because this particular diagram is very important to understand the ECG electrocardiography. Uh, this is plays you know a baseline for uh, you know to understand the ECG and its whole mechanism. So let's start off with the uh, sinoatrial node. There is a delay of 0.3 seconds in the AV node as you can see over here. Now the first delay occurs over here you can see between the AV uh, uh, SA and the AV bundle fiber there is a delay of more than 0.1 second that is 0.03 to 0.17 immediately or 0.16 so there, the delay is much more than uh, 0.16 of the second so this is the first delay then it moves deep down uh, to the bundle branches where the there is a further delay uh, you can see of about uh, uh, 0.5 seconds and this delay uh, is the delay where the conduction impulses are being transmitted towards the very peripheral portions of the ventricle muscle fibers. Now, uh, let's discuss the role of the SA node as the pacemaker of heart. Now, this plays a very important function because we are, we are going to discuss some of the factors which, you know, highlight the role of the SA node as the pacemaker. And uh, this is basically the natural pacemaker of the heart, which basically is responsible for the initiation and the, you know, monitoring of the impulses, even the AV node are being generating. So first of all, uh, why it's being 
uh, termed as the pacemaker of heart is because of its discharge rate. Now, its discharge rate is much more as compared to the discharge rate of AV bundle and the Purkinje fibers. Uh, that is because the discharge rate is 7 to 80 times much more faster than the AV and the Purkinje fibers. Now, what I mean by saying this is that the, the SA node initiates its action potential and uh, trans, uh, you know, completes, terminates its action potential, that is, discharges its action potential. And uh, before the AV node or the uh, Purkinje fiber can excite themselves, the discharge uh, reaches from the SNO towards the uh, AV bundle fibers. So this is like uh, the AV nodes, the AV and the Purkinje fibers, they are uh, receiving the transmission passively. So they, they, they don't need, find the need to, you know, cause the self-excitation because they are receiving the excitation stimulus from the SNO. So they do not find the need to excite themselves. So SA impulses, they are conducted to both AV and the Purkinje fibers. It's been established up till now. The SA node discharges before AV and the Purkinje fibers can excite themselves. This I have explained in detail that uh, before, because the discharge rate is much more greater in the SA node as compared to the AV node. So what happens basically is that they are exciting. They are basically, SA node is basically causing the excitation of both AV and the Purkinje fibers. Now, uh, SA impulses discharges both in the AV and the uh, Purkinje fibers before they cause ex self excitations. So that is why the sinoatrial node controls the heartbeat of the ray, uh, heartbeat, uh, because of course the uh, SA node is responsible for uh, causing its self excitation and also the excitation of SA, uh, sorry, AV node and the PF for the Purkinje fibers. So this is known as the uh, pacemaker of heart. So a pacemaker, which uh, with basically an abnormal sequence of the contraction, it's a definition of the ectopic pacemaker is known as the ectopic pacemaker. So what happens in basically uh, a pacemaker can develop, you know, uh, it's important to consider over here that a pacemaker uh, can develop in the uh, Purkinje fibers as well. But I'm going to discuss why and how under what circumstances the pacemaker can develop uh, in the uh, Purkinje fibers. So whenever there is an abnormal sequence of contraction of the heart either in the atria or the uh, because pr primarily because of the you know abnormalities that are concerned with the SA nodal fibers I either this is a blockage of the SA node or it's not being functioning properly uh, properly or there is you know an uh, huge ionic imbalance electrolytic imbalance uh, but there is some effect on the SA nodal uh, you know contraction so it will won't be contracting in a regular fashion so this would of course disturb uh, this, uh, the normal physiological contraction and that particular pacemaker in this particular scenario is called the ectopic pacemaker. So uh, Stokes-Adams syndrome. Before uh, I discuss the Stokes-Adams syndrome, I want you again to pause this particular video and think under what circumstances uh, the pacemaker can be developed in the Purkinje fibers. So uh, I, I hope you, you know, you get a particular overview or you get a hint of what is basically actually going on between the SA node or the Purkinje fibers. So what basically happens is that when the AV or the atrioventricular nodal fiber, there is a blockage of the AV. So what would happen in that particular scenario is that the sinus nodal fiber, they won't be uh, able to transmit impulses from the SA uh, to the ventricular uh, Purkinje fibers. So what at this particular time, the atria will be contracting regularly. They will be, you know, filling uh, the blood into the ventricles, but because there is a blockage at the AV nodal fiber system, they won't be able to transmit the impulses towards the Purkinje fibers. Now, there would be a particular delay of about five to 20 seconds when the Purkinje fibers can establish their own pacemaker. And this delay is because uh, they are being suppressed to cause the self-excitation by receiving the signals continuously and simultaneously from the SA nodal discharge. So they don't find the need to excite themselves. 
So what basically happens in that particular scenario is that there is a delay when the uh, ventricles are not being contracted and immediately the Purkinje fibers sense the need to you know excite themselves and they don't excite themselves because they are using the uh, discharge uh, receiving the transmittery uh, impulses from the SA node because there is no blockage and now there is suddenly a blockage of AV nodal fibers. So at that particular case what will happen is that the Purkinje fiber won't receive any uh, impulses so uh, there would be a delay because uh, they are hoping to receive the impulses from the SA node but they are not receiving because of the AV block so what would happen their discharge would be you know the dis discharge effect would be uh, so, uh, eliminated and they will hence cause the uh, self excitation in the similar fashion like the SA nodal fibers are being uh, generated so at that particular point uh, Perkunze fibers develops the pacemaker of its own so there that particular delay where the ventricles were not being were not contracting the, the delay of about 5 to 20 seconds uh, the the ventricles were not pumping of course right so they were not able to uh, transport the oxygenated blood to the brain so at that particular time for four one to four one to five seconds or even more because the brain is not receiving oxygen for that particular time a person facing this particular condition uh, you know faints for about one to four one to five seconds and this particular escape of heartbeat during that particular scenario when the ventricles are not contracting is known as the stokes adam syndrome this stokes adam syndrome lasts for about uh, 15 to 20 seconds it usually doesn't last long because uh, of the establishment of the you know pacemaker of its own by the Purkinje fibers but in case they don't uh, the uh, pacemaker is not been established for many reasons uh, what basically happens is that it can lead to death because when because are not being contracting the first thing would happen would be uh, the brain death so uh, this basically summarizes what we have the, uh, we have been going through this particular lecture SA node, the internodal pathway, anterior, middle and the posterior, the AV nodal fiber, delay of 0 0.03 seconds, AV uh, bundle fibers uh, during that there is a further delay of 0 0.09 seconds. Uh, moving down to the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch where there is a further delay of 0 uh, 0 0.04 seconds so the total delay is about 0.16 seconds. So uh, in the last portion, we are going to discuss the control of heart by the parasympathetic systems and the sympathetic system. Now, uh, two of the hormones play a key role in the, both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, so upon the excitation or the stimulation of the parasympathetic system, the acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter as well, is being released. Now, uh, with the release of the acetylcholine, the potassium channels are being increased. Uh, so they will cause the uh, hyperpolarization. Now this hormone will of course have two effects on the body. Number one is because they are causing hyperpolarization again and again. So this will cause the decrease of the uh, rhythmical excitation of the SA node because it has caused uh, the uh, hyperpolarization. So that particular point will increase in time so that SA node won't be excited. So its excitation would be, you know, uh, paused or slowed down. The second thing is that it will of course cause the decrease in the excitability of the AV bundle fibers so that the transmission of the impulses will also slow down. Now uh, let's summarize what we have discussed up till now. Acetylcholine is being released upon the parasympathetic simulation. It will cause the potassium channels to open. So it more potassium channels opening means the hyper uh, polarization has been increased. After the hyper polarization has been increased, what would happen is that it will cause two things. Number one is decrease in the uh, rhythmical excitation of the SA node. Uh, furthermore, it will also slow down the process of the transmission of the impulses through the AV nodal fibers as well. So a weak to moderate uh, stimulation will of course slow down the heart rate to about one half, one half of the normal but uh, upon the strong stimulation they will cause the permanent or uh, uh, you know stop or the blockage of the SA excitation and transmission and under the strong stimulation if the strong stimulation uh, remains for a particularly longer time it can cause uh, the uh, beating of the heart to stop. 
So uh, let's discuss about the ventricular escape. Uh, of course, when this would happen, the ventricle will stop beating uh, because they are not receiving the excitatory signals because SA uh, node has been, you know, decreased in uh, terms of the self-excitation and the transmission are not being, you know, are not being carried out from the SA to the AV bundle. So uh, at that particular point, there would be a delay and the Perkunze fiber, as I have discussed in the previous slide, will develop uh, its own pacemaker. Now, this particular, uh, because the ventricle fibers have developed their own uh, contraction, this particular escape of the ventricle contraction is, of course, known as the ventricular escape. So, uh, we have discussed the parasympathetic system. Now, we have, uh, let's discuss about the sympathetic systems and then we'll summarize it. So, uh, the stimulation of the uh, parasympathetic sy system causes the, cause the basically, uh, stimulation of the acetylcholine. Over here, things are different. Uh, sympathetic stim system stimulation cause the excitation of the norepinephrine hormones. Now it will cause the effect which is basically opposite to that of acetylcholine or the parasympathetic or the vagal nervous system. So it will cause, of course, uh, the first thing it will cause is the excitation of the sinus nodal discharge. It will increase the rate of nodal discharge so that uh, the uh, uh, usually which was about 75 to 80 times much more greater it will you know shoot to up to uh, more than 150 even up to 200 times greater uh, discharge rate than the AV nodal fibers. Number second is of course uh, one thing was it increased the um, discharge rate of the SA node and the second thing is that it will increase the conduction rate. And of course, along with that, it will also cause the excitability of in all portions of the heart. The third thing is that it will cause the a huge amount of force to generate uh, for the ventricles to contract. So it did three basic things. The first thing was it caused the dis increase in the discharge rate of the SA node. So SA node are, you know, is being discharged in a comparatively higher rate. The second thing was it increased also the conduction rate or the transmission rate. And the third thing, it also increased the contraction uh, force of the uh, cardiac muscle fibers. So in this particular lecture, we discussed about the uh, specialized excitatory and the conductive system of heart. Uh, we discuss how this it plays a very important role in initiation, generation and transmission of the impulses for the heart to beat normally. We discussed the role of the sinoatrial node. We discussed its structure, location, their differentiation, uh, and we discussed how it transmits its impulses and along with its mechanism. We discussed the automatic electrical rhythmicity of the sinus nodal fibers along with its self-excitation. Uh, this was followed by the internodal pathways, how they play a very important function in the transmission of the impulses from the SA to the AV nodal fibers uh, and from AV to the ventricles. And then we discussed the role, important role of the AV bundle in delaying the transmission of impulses from the atria to the ventricles so that the ventricles gets the time to get filled with blood. So this was followed by the rapid transmission in the ventricular Purkinje system fibers. Uh, this was of course because of the uh, high uh, permeability of the gap junctions in the intercalated disc of the uh, tissues that basically make up the Purkinje fibers. Uh, this was followed by the of course spread of uh, uh, impulses throughout the heart and we discussed the important role of sinus node or the SA node uh, as a pacemaker of heart and we discussed what is basically a ventricular escape and we discuss stoke adams syndrome what happens during that syndrome and why person faints during that particular time and that was because of the lack of oxygen that the brain receives during that particular time and when we did and then we discussed the control of the heart rate by both parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system by explaining the role of the acetylcholine in a parasympathetic system by decreasing the heart rate and uh, in and the role of norepinephrine in the sympathetic system uh, to increase the heart rate and that is all for this particular lecture uh, for more lectures keep watching scaria.com thank you